Course 4, Neuromotor Function and Social Cognition. Welcome to Week 3, Addressing Neuromotor Function in the Classroom. So this week, we're going to talk about ways to establish a classroom environment that embraces neuromotor diversity and really celebrates what's special about each student and honors what's challenging for each student. So this includes ideas for offering alternatives for students with neuromotor challenges such that they can participate in all learning activities and in the classroom. And also, we'll think about ideas for to offer opportunities for students to develop their skills in neuromotor function or demonstrate neuromotor strengths and allow them to feature interests that include strength in neuromotor function. So the two learning objectives for this week are as follows. First, to understand strategies for helping students develop skills or bypass weaknesses in neuromotor function. And also, to apply knowledge and vocabulary related to neuromotor function to identify class-wide strategies that use strengths and affinities to leverage challenges. So in this slide, we'll start by thinking about alternatives for students who have neuromotor challenges. And these are really ideas for ways to bypass neuromotor weaknesses such that students are able to participate meaningfully throughout the school day. And before I go through a bit of explanation for each of these bullet points, I really want to just put out there, of course, I don't think this is an exhaustive list of all of the ways to offer alternatives for students with neuromotor challenge. Instead, this list is really meant as a, as a starting place for thinking about ways to offer those kinds of alternatives. And I think what I'm going to do is put up a discussion forum, a general discussion forum, at the top of our Moodle page for this week. Um, I'll put it up this week, but it'll be at the top of the Moodle page. So that I'll, I'll start with these four bullet points as ideas for alternatives. Um, and I really encourage everyone to add ideas that you have, either that you think of on your own or that you come across in your work. And that way we could develop a class-wide resource of the kinds of ideas that would support students who demonstrate neuromotor challenge in the classroom. And of course, that's not a formal assignment. It's an, it's an opportunity. It's not an obligation. OK, so the first idea I have listed here is leveraging technology. And in terms of leveraging technology, we've talked about using ways to use technology to bypass graphomotor weakness in particular, right? So we've talked about offering students the chance to use a keyboard instead of writing by hand so that they can participate in a task of writing um, and coming up with ideas for writing, generating prose, generating text, and responding to prompts through essays. But that's not the only way to use technology, right? So one example of another way would be to use technology to allow students to use computer models of manipulatives instead of handling the physical manipulatives. And this would support a student who had a weakness in fine motor function. So when you start to think about what it is that a student is struggling with in terms of neuromotor function, the technology supports, of course, should match what the weakness itself is. Another idea is to think about group tasks, grouping of students, and the design of group tasks in particular through a neurodevelopmental lens of thinking about neuromotor function. So for example, group tasks allow for students to take on different roles. So students with neuromotor challenges could be spared having to complete the tasks that are particularly strenuous to them or frustrating. For example, if we think about a group activity, say in middle school, in which students are supposed to design, build, and test a model suspension bridge to understand principles of engineering or physics, right? the learning goal is around understanding these principles of engineering. The neuromotor function weakness could potentially become a barrier for a student in building the model suspension bridge. So in a group, a student with a fine motor weakness could be the person who presents the model and answers questions about the model and participates in discussions about the design and even does some of the work of building but isn't tasked with the, with the primary task of using fine motor skills to build. Instead, the group, the group as a whole can focus on the construction of the bridge and the student with the neuromotor, uh, fine motor weakness might be the person who's best suited to really discussing and talking about that project. 
Next, if we think about the design of in-class activities and expectations, we might think of ways to start manipulating those to support students and include students who have neuromotor challenges. So for example, there's common routines such as lining up to leave the classroom, putting chairs up on desks at the end of the day, or using those concrete manipulatives in math that may pose really grave challenges for students with neuromotor weakness. However, small modifications to these routines could be a really powerful alternative for struggling students. So for example, students who have difficulty with fine motor function, snapping counting cubes together, could be quite challenging and off-putting to them, but if they were partnered and had a chance to be the one to count the cubes once those cubes were already snapped together by their partner, they might be able to really um, develop a strength and, and feature a strength of theirs as opposed to being the one um, who's struggling with putting the pieces together. For another idea, instead of illustrating a story or creating a line graph to represent data, students could select images from magazines, the internet, or books to include with their work. So again, these modifications to the activities are really intended to maintain the learning goal and the learning objective of the task, but mitigate the negative impact of a pre-existing neuromotor challenge or weakness. And finally, assessments themselves can be modified to allow students with neuromotor challenge to better demonstrate what they think and what they know. So things like oral responses, keyboard writing, or collection and explanation of items or artifacts are, are some of these potential ways to assess student learning while bypassing weaknesses. So, like I said, this is the beginning of the list, this is not the complete list, and I'll post a discussion forum called Alternatives for Students Who Have Neuromotor Challenges on our Moodle page, and if you're so moved, please add to that list. Okay, next we'll think about opportunities for students to develop and or demonstrate strengths in neuromotor function. So it's really important to look for these opportunities to develop and work on neuromotor um, functioning skills. As we talked about before, for some students with weaknesses in other constructs in heavy demand at school, like language, memory, or attention, opportunities to demonstrate neuromotor strength can be a relatively rare and important opportunity um, for them to be able to participate. And also, for students who have neuromotor weaknesses, bypassing those weaknesses at times is really key, as we talked about, for making sure those students have access to the learning objectives of lessons. But it can also be just as important to work on developing strengths in the areas of weakness. So it might not be the right time of day to work on the physical task of graphomotor function when students are working on story sense or author's voice. But there might be other times of the day that some practice and graphomotor skills would be a huge support to a student who, who is challenged in that area. So here are some ideas. The first is to incorporate art in the classroom. So for students who already have uh, graphomotor or fine motor strength, incorporating opportunities for sculpture, for building, for painting, um, or for drawing can give them a chance to really feature what it is that they, they are good at and what they potentially love to do. For students who have weaknesses in these areas, in neuromotor, um, fine motor, or graphomotor function, art can be a chance to work on developing skills in those areas. Next, movement in the classroom can be a really great opportunity for students. So things like skits, um, playing with balls, or even going outside to look for shapes or angles in math um, or other features of the environment that happen to connect to the content presented in class can give students who have an affinity for gross motor function or a strength in gross motor function a chance to exhibit that or to, or to um, work on that. Also, for students who have challenges in something like gross motor function, having a chance to go outside could be an opportunity to develop some strength in that area. And finally, giving students a chance to generate topics of their own for research, writing, and projects can give them a chance to bring some of those neuromotor interests or affinities into their academic work. So for example, a student with gross motor strength may really know a lot about a sport like basketball or about dance, and so writing on these topics can be much richer and much more motivating as compared to topics that are assigned by the teacher or selected 
for them. So I'll put up a, um, hopefully those ideas make some good sense, and I'll put up another discussion forum for opportunities for students to develop and demonstrate neuromotor strengths in the same general discussion area of our Moodle page, and if and when you have other ideas that you come up with on your own or come across, I highly encourage you to add those so we can develop our class resource. Okay, and finally, there's an idea about thinking about just supporting neuromotor function diversity broadly in the classroom. And this is really something about cultivating a climate of acceptance and difference in the classroom. And that includes neuromotor function, but it's not limited to that. So things like celebrating excellent questions, um, celebrating interesting mistakes that students make, um, that really lead to learning on a daily basis or on a regular basis can add to a classroom climate where students learn that difference and mistakes and demonstrations of things that are not perfect or totally polished is okay. And cultivating that kind of classroom in environment makes a huge difference for students who struggle with neuromotor function in particular. And the reason is neuromotor function is something that can be very visible to others, right? We talked about those students who have an awkward sense of body in space are very obvious to their peers, and it can be humiliating at times for students. It can make them the subject of ridicule, and it can really lead to some experiences at school that can be potentially take a long time to get over for students. Um, However, in a classroom environment that accepts diversity of all forms, including skills diversity and learning diversity and neuromotor diversity, um, the kinds of ways of expressing yourself in the classroom that are different than what's typical can become sources of celebration and interest instead. Another way to support neuromotor function diversity and diversity in general is just to have everyone feel open to sharing strengths and weaknesses and that begins often with the teacher. So modeling as a teacher that we come with strengths and we come with areas of weakness and that's okay and that those areas of weakness are things that we might be working on and at times bypassing as well. Um, I think really modeling that for students makes a huge contribution to a classroom climate that embraces diversity. And finally, celebrating both the risk-taking itself and growth. So for someone who's kind of swinging out and, and being vulnerable in taking those risks to work on a strength or to share, or excuse me, to work on a weakness or to share about a weakness, celebrating that risk-taking endeavor itself makes a huge um, contribution to the classroom climate and also celebrating even small aspects of growth in any area um, working towards improvement in some area of challenge or weakness and showing that that's possible and that is something um, that the class can provide encouragement and support for can make a huge difference in the lives of students Finally, we have a few assignment, a couple assignments for this week. So please read the Helping Hands resource guide that's posted in your in your on our on week three for our page. We also have a discussion forum that's about cultivating a classroom environment that supports neuromotor diversity. So I encourage you to think about that more deeply and to share ideas that you have for what that might look like in your own work. And we also have part one, which is not listed on this slide, but is true. Part one of our ongoing act, uh, assignment for this course is, is due by the end of week three. And again, the goal is for you to select a target student, someone who you find interesting in terms of neuromotor function and or social cognition, because this assignment will carry through for all six weeks. And you're going to be thinking about uh, describing that student in terms of their neuromotor function for your assignment this week. Again, if you have any questions about any of this, please feel free to email me or ask me when we see each other this week on Wednesday at our go-to meeting session. I hope you have a great couple days, and I will look forward to seeing you soon. Bye-bye.